present perfect. So when we talk about present perfect, let me put it here. Tense. Present perfect tense. If you were in my class before, you know that a tense is a grammatical time that we use to just talk about a, an action in time. Okay, it's a grammatical time that we use to talk about an action that happened at any point in time. So with that being said, um, let's talk about the present perfect and let's see the differences between present perfect and the other times. Uh, like simple past that you might confuse it with. Uh, basically simple past because those are the, the two that people used to confuse, are used to confusing. Um, so first, what do you want to see? Structure again. No problem mode. Structure. In structure, we have first to know the auxiliary have or has. Okay, this is new for you. In the present perfect, we have an auxiliary. It is called have or has, okay? You know this verb. As a verb, you know it for possession uh, mm. or to talk about other activities. Now, in this case, mm. it's not about that. In this case, it's an auxiliary. Do you remember do or does in the simple present? Like in questions and in negative and stuff. So mm. have and has are the auxiliaries here. Mm. So, having has are the auxiliaries here. So what do we have? Um, okay, so you say you remember that, cool. Now, in the structure, we have in the affirmative, I, uh, can I put it, yeah, I'm gonna put it next to it, okay? You, they have. And what is the, yeah, have an past participle. This is very important for you because this is what is going to give you the most headaches. And believe me when I say this is going to give you the most headaches, past participle. Because as students, this is the first time you see this, maybe. And this is something you have to memorize. There's nothing I can do to help you with that. I can give you some activities you can do, but it's your job to memorize them and to practice with them, okay? I can give you like some tricks you can do to memorize them. So I will do it on WhatsApp later on. Um, so in the affirmative, what do we have? We have the pronoun. In this case, we have I, you, they, plus the auxiliary have, plus the past participle. That's basically the structure of and obviously the complement after that. In the negative, oh no, wait, I missed this one. She, he, it. In this case plus has, 
equals past participle. Now, in negative, the structure is not very complicated. The only thing that we do is that we add not after the auxiliary. Similar to don't and doesn't, here is have and hasn't. You see, haven't, hasn't. Same thing. So I have, we have I, you, they, plus have not. You see how simple it is? And let's call this PP, past participle. No, I don't use all the pronouns because this is just an example of what you can use. Like for example, I, you, and plural pronouns. When they are different, I put it on a different side. For example, he, she, and it. Uh, she, he, it. Same thing, has, not, plus the PP. What is PP? Remember, past participle. I just don't want to repeat the part to write past participle. So that's the negative. You see how simple it is? Remember, here it's not necessarily a pronoun, it can be a name, it can be Maria, Juan, uh, here, Maria, Juan, Pedro. Here it can be you only, uh, I, and they. Basically, with pronouns, we do this. But here, you can put Maria, Juan, Pedro. Here, it can be Julian and Juana, uh, Maria and Jose, and John and Laura. Here on top, you can have that because it's plural. So you have have for that. And in questions, well, we have two type of questions. Remember. So, yes or no questions. Yes or no questions? In yes or no questions, what do we do? What do we do in the simple pressing with yes or no questions? What is the first thing we use in the simple pressing with the yes or no questions? That's if you remember. Come on, help me here. In a yes or no question in simple present, what is the first thing we use? The auxiliary, exactly. So we use do or does. In here, we are going to do the same thing. The same thing. We're going to use have or has. Okay, plus the pronoun or noun. the PP, and you know, the rest of the question, like the complement. So let's have some examples here. So you can, um, here, here, okay. I have, wow. I have eaten lobster. This is gonna be our example. I have eaten lobster. What do we have? The pronoun, the auxiliary have, the past participle of the verb eat, that's the past participle of the verb eat, and love and the complement. Lobster is just, you know, a complement. So I have eaten lobster. In the negative, We have, I have not, I have not visited Sosua, just an example, I've been there. So, I have not visited Sosua. You see the negative, I, the pronoun, have not visited, which is the past participle of visit. Yeah, it's similar to the simple past, the form, to the past form. But it's because it's a regular verb. For regular verbs, the past participle and the simple and the past form is the same. So I have not visited Sosua. 
Yes or no questions. Have you been to Puerto Plata? <laughs> have you been to Puerto Plata recently? If you have, please stay away from me. I don't want coronavirus in my life. So have you been to Puerto, Prala, to Puerto, Puerto, Puerto Plata recently? Um, so this is a yes or no question. What is the answer for that? Yes, I have. Those are the possible answers. Yes, I have, like, yes, I do. Do you remember? Yes, I do, no, I don't. Here is the same thing. Yes, I have, or no, I haven't. So this is the contraction of have not. Uh, let me put this here. Yes, I have, no, I haven't. You see, yes, I have, no, I haven't. So the construction of have not is haven't, haven't. The construction of has not is hasn't, hasn't. Um, so any questions so far? Any questions so far? No, nope. Okay, cool. So let's continue to the next part. So we talked about structure. Now let's talk about um, use, the use of the present perfect, as we talked about structure. Well, no, if we talked about structure, I need to talk about the verbs, verbs. Pass form, past participle form. Hey, I think I sent to the group a picture for you to have of verbs in past form and past participle form. So I will check again, I will resend it so you can have it there. Please save that picture, it is very good and very useful for you. Because for uh, the exercises that you're gonna be completing, you have to use those verbs and you will have to check that list from time to time. So. Past participle form. We have two types of verbs. Um, regular and irregular verbs. Okay, two types of verbs, regular and irregular verbs. For regular verbs, the past participle and the past form are the same. You see? Regular verbs are uh, lovely. They're lovely. They are something else. Because we don't need to work on that. Like, it's pretty simple. The same rule that I use for the past, I am going, for the verbs in past, I'm going to use it for the verbs in past participle. For example, if I have visit, sorry, visit, the past form of visit is visited, and the past participle is visited as well. So as you notice, let me put it here, base, past, and the PP, past participle. Okay, you see the base, Visit, base form. The past, visited. The past participle, visited. Same thing, it doesn't change. 
Okay, so the same rules that you use for the verbs, the same rules you're gonna use for the past participle. Now, irregular verbs don't follow a specific rule. So, irregular verbs don't follow a specific rule, guys. They do not follow orders. They don't know. They do not like to be. Um, I don't know. They do not follow orders. That's the point. Okay, so they are different, unique. Yes, we have questions. We have WH questions. Of course, we have WH questions. But I think I don't have to explain that since you know it's like pretty simple. You're gonna see it later on. Um, so they are unique. For example, eat, the past of eat, ate, the past participle, eaten. Eat, ate, eaten. Another, break. The past, broke. The past participle, broken. Break, broke, broken. So, like that, we have many irregular verbs. So as I told you, I sent you a list with irregular verbs. Please check them out, have them there handy. So every time you're completing an exercise or you do one of the activities that I'm going to tell you to do to practice with them, you have them handy, you have them right there, okay? So regular verbs don't change. In the past and in the past participle, they are the same. Irregular verbs, they have their own form, their own structure, they are unique, they are different. So, you have to memorize them, okay? So your job is to memorize them. There you go. Um, so, that pretty much is about structure. Thank you for listening.